Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. I hope everybody had a great uh, weekend so far. And uh, right now we'll go ahead and wrap that up with the uh, Sunday Bible study. And then, you know, it's, 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 it's just interesting that uh, as Paul was teaching, I wanted to talk about the preaching of another gospel to justify hate. You know, the one of the scriptures that sit there and said, you know, because I think it's just important to know is that what profits a man to gain the whole world and yet loses his soul? Or what would a man do in exchange for his soul? There was a when when we looked at the the issues today, and I I think it's 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 always been this 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 spirit of Cain uh, that 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 really continued to pervade into our society of. Uh, not being a brother keeper, uh, opposed to being a brother keeper. You know, um, I was looking at the scripture the other day, and it was, was talking, uh, I mean, talking about uh, false apostles is, is, is coming out of Second Corinthians. And then I really wanted to uh, go into the... Uh, I wanted to go into how people are motivated in life. Uh, and, and the interesting thing about that is that uh, you you can't you can't sit there in life. And and justify your actions or deeds uh, based on uh, based on getting over on, on somebody else and and trying to put somebody else down just because it gives some type of profit to you and 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 you ask yourself. What, how did the gospel, another gospel was taught, why was another gospel taught to deduce up to this modern day this selfishness of hate? Uh, you call it hate, you can call it, uh, I think I think you call it, you call it jealousy, you can call it I, but you won't call it love, right? The whole purpose of the gospel is the gospel of love. You know, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? And so when I look at the uh, uh, things such as racism and so forth, and how it even crept into what I call the uh, the Christianity. Does even been pushed today uh, by segments of our society, but but we've been pushed <laughs> for for since the beginning of the. I guess really, I I could say this the slave trade, but I think the body of Christ uh, started to fight and consolidate itself, uh, at least from the from the Catholic perspective of, of the Roman Empire, of trying to bring everybody under one umbrella. Uh, to to force people or any ministry, any 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 
worship place to to conform to one set of rules and and that was uh, that's when Roman Catholic uh, or the Roman Empire uh, made Christianity their uh, uh, what you call it their main uh, religion and they basically that Catholic called me universal church so they basically were trying to bring everything under one umbrella right and in some cases by a lot of cases by force but the point is that what 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 does it what what profit a person right to to gain the whole world and and and, and lose his soul you know and 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 why did the people teach something other than the gospel to to people, right? Let me make sure I get this get this right here. He said for it's uh Matthew six twenty six. Let me see here. Matthew six twenty six. Here it is. Is it look let's look at this right here. Because we gotta go by what what did Christ what was Christ teaching? And and how did it prevail today that we find that we want to be similar to what the Pharisees and the Sadducees were. It says right here, uh, the subtitle there said, take up your cross and follow Yahusha or Yeshua. Or for many, because it was given to us in the 1500s, uh, Jesus. But it's Yeshua or Yahusha, right? And let's see what we got here. It says, verse 24, Then said Yeshua unto the disciple, If any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, that that's, that's what Christ said. That's what Yahusha said, right? Take up his cross and follow me, not follow people, not follow anything that's not following him. So, you know, I think Paul once said, said, follow me as I follow Christ. And if I'm not following Christ, don't follow me, basically. Christ is our example. And if Christ is our example, remember what I said one time before it says that what would Yahusha do? And you know, even with saying this is is being the fact that there's so many people have been held under and told that this is this is you say Jesus, that they, you say that, you know, even though it's not the the name. Uh tradition, right? Our tradition says, no, we, we're going to do what we told you to do. You're going to say what we told you to say, uh, which, which, is, which is fine in itself. But the whole point is to stay with the gospel because what been taught sometimes has shown that it steers away from following Christ. I mean, all ministries should talk about following Christ. And and anytime you do something contrary to what Christ said, then then we got a problem, right? You know, think about it. Who who, who you who are you supposed to follow? Who are you supposed to follow? I, it's because it, it's it's so interesting that Christ even said. Some of you will follow somebody else. Even if somebody else will sit there and say, look, 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 you, you, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm a follower of Christ, and I want you to hate this person. I want you to crucify this person. I want you to, to deny this person or these people because, that, because I said that, that they are 
they're not under the, you know, supposed to, Pastor Pope Nicholas, he sat there and said, these people are not covered under the grace of God. And then many of us in our society today would dehumanize a human being so that they can say, because they're not covered under the grace of God, I want you to burn them, you know, like the, the Salem witch hunt, right? They, they, they burned people. Huh? How about the slave trade? Huh? The, how about the Jim Crow law? Huh? How about racism today is sitting there where people have been said they're gonna go in here and raise their hands, or maybe they don't raise their hands because I'm gonna sit there and just you know bring it in the machine, you know, or just listen to to contrary teaching of Christ. You know, so so we're supposed to follow. Christ, we were to do what he told us to do. He gave us a commandment to love one another as he has loved us, that we should love one another. This is the teaching of Christ. And you know that any time we sit there and dehumanize a human, a human being to justify our displeasure, our hate, our, our, our ostracizing because we're sitting there saying that Christ would have done it. And no, Christ would not have done it. Christ would not have done it. But we, 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 and our, the father I'm saying is that I'm saying is that some people have been teaching another type of gospel. Look what Christ said here. Verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world? Let me make sure. Let me put it up here. I'm sorry. thought I was sharing. <laughs> let me go ahead and put it up here. And we'll start again and, and keep on going. This is subtitles, take up your cross and follow me. Then said Yahuwah unto the disciple, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come into his glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there shall there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. You, you, the thing about it is, despite that, despite that, out of especially out of deception, and, and I'm gonna sit there and say, ministry, whether whether you're Catholic or or non-denomination, if you're teaching anything other than following Christ, and and I'm telling you, we know we've seen it. We know that people sit there and 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 go after people uh, that are different. And and it's funny we we you know one of the things about the uh, the current uh, uh, news that people put out about uh, one particular sin is they 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 they're going to hell they they they're just going to hell and 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 made it seem because at least from from hearing right or at least from observing that some people think that well we 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 have defined that this is these are the people that go go to hell because they're not doing this forgetting the fact that some people sit there used to say that because of the color of skin the people are not going they're going to hell and and then we we find that there's different types of uh 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 philosophy that had come into the body of Christ where people feel that it is okay to 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 do bad things to somebody because of their color of their skin or because of their uh, what sexual orientation or something that that this just this, this is justifiable. This is justifiable to hate them, to to kick them out. Because that's what they did. 
for the for the color. And 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 then to sit there and say, well, we're now we're gonna take something else to modern day, right? We're gonna use that as our go to go tack and, and and do everything you can to these people if you can. I mean, even probably in the daytime, because a lot of people will sit there and say, Well, the justification is that we're not gonna cause Take up your cross and follow Yahusha. Matthew 16, 24 says, Then said Yahusha. Come maybe it's time for us to start knowing his Hebrew name. The other one is Yeshua. Then said Yahusha unto his disciples. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death to see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The, the biggest piece I, I see, I, I listen to and, and follow here is Every man, every man shall receive his reward. For the Father then shall he reward every man according to his works. So if, if, if we're going to teach the gospel, we need to understand that every individual, and I don't think we're doing that. I'm thinking is we 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 love to get into this mass of of, of uh, mob type mentality, really, to follow the 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 uh, the objective, the 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 flavor for what the mob says, opposed to what Christ said. And we we'll be trying to teach people to all fall in line into a doctrine, a, a, a particular way. And 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 we don't what like I said is that there's people watching us. And if we're teaching how to hate, dehumanize people, and we don't and we don't recognize that people don't see that. People don't see that we're teaching, if, if you know, the, what's the scripture that says, you know, bear good fruit, right? You know, matter of fact, I, I'll go ahead and put it up here. If we show people how to bear bad fruit, if we show people how to, to walk not in the spirit, but in the flesh, and, and still, and still say, well, I love, I love the Lord, but I hate you. I hate that sin, so I'm going to project what I hate about the sin onto the person and call the person a sinner. And I'm going to be disgusted of that person instead of being disgusted of that sin. And we don't recognize that people see what your fruit that you're bearing. And they, they go off about what you do, not by what you say. It's so easy to go by what we do instead of going by what he said we should do. And then we think it's okay, but it's not okay. It's not okay to do that which leads to destruction. It's not okay to discriminate. It's not okay to murder. Look at it. Look at the works of the flesh. Look what it says here. Let me put it up here for you. Because we, in, in ministry, I'm telling you, every minister that teaches another doctrine 
that don't get people, don't preach the path of Christ, but preach hate. Let me tell you something. You are in jeopardy. And you know you are in jeopardy. That's the sad thing about it. You know if you teach hate. You know, even when Pope Nicholas did it for the slave trade and told these people not covered on the grace of God, he knew he was more focused on the greed opposed to focus on his own personal salvation. Because what we gain in this world, what we do in this world does not... <laughs> If we don't see in this world that we're supposed to do and live according to what Christ taught, if we don't understand that in John 14, 6, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me, not by your denomination, not by your political party, not by the color of your skin, not by the wealth in your pocket. It's all about your eternal life. And if we don't put the value on the eternal life, if we, the ministries and ministries, those of you that are in the body of Christ, those of you say you're the body of Christ, if you're not reconciling the world unto God, if you're not thinking it is more important for you to reconcile this world, reconciling people to come into the understanding of the gospel, and to follow Christ. Maybe that's the whole point. Maybe maybe that's what we need to, to, to start ministering to people is the fact is follow Christ. Don't follow me, follow Christ. Don't follow my denomination, follow Christ. And ministry, stop. If you want to be us under shepherd, you shepherd them to the shepherd, the shepherd, because that's all that matters. Look at this, it says here. And in and, and, uh, Galatians chapter 5, 16, sorry, verse 16, the subtitle of that is, keep in step with the spirit, with the Ruha HaKadosh. That's, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the name. That's, the, that, that's, that's what they call in Hebrew, the Holy Spirit. And then we sit there and they put things in there and, and, and try to get us not to understand the importance, oh, how much we have tried and taught people to walk in darkness and still make them feel that they're doing the teaching. If, if you're not teaching following Christ, you're not following and pointing to Christ, what, you, what are you teaching? And why are you teaching something that you know leads not only yourself, but leads all others who follow you? to destruction. What's the profit of it? None. Verse 16, this I say, they walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary the one to the other so you cannot do the things that you will. But if you live by the spirit, you're not under the law. Then look at these things that are the works of the flesh. He said in verse 19, now the works of the flesh are manifest with the deed. Look, look, look at this. Just look at it. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation. Look at this. Wrath, strife. Look at that. Sedition, heresies, envy, murder. Drunkenness, reveling, and such like of which I tell you before, as I told you in time past, that they would do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Shall not inherit the kingdom of God. When we as believers sit there and teach people, teach our congregation to go after people because they're not following the fruits of the Spirit of being led by the Holy Spirit that we feel that we're obligated to go after those people and, 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 and magnify their shortfalls. Not really not recognize we, all, we also magnify our own shortfalls. There's no glory in the flesh. 
That's not. It's only death when we fall in line with it, right? Because verse 22 said, but the fruits of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory provoking one another, envying one another. And look at that thing about it. Let us not be operating in vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. That, that's, what the, that's what the scripture is saying. That, that's what... Now, you can't mix all of us. I'm guilty at some point or another, but we can't mix the, the, the things of the world and try to teach other people to follow Christ if we're mixing things that are contrary to the teaching of God, contrary to the teaching of following Christ. The whole point of our ministry, what, why the fact is, why do you think we're going to call, what does Christ, what does Christian mean? It means Christ-like. Well, somehow along we feel like that, that when you despise somebody, are you sitting there saying that you're following Christ? That's Christ-like? Who who did Christ have confrontation with? Did you never notice that Christ never had confrontation with sinners? He had, he had, he had confrontation with believers, church leaders, and and and, and any other. A uh, group of people that does not following, you know, that that that, that want to hold on to the law, and so, so they can use the law as a tool to control other people. Opposed to the fact is that there's the love. The what is what, what the two great commandments is to love the Lord that God with all that heart, with all our mind, all our soul, and all our strength, and to love that neighbor as thyself. To love that neighbor as thyself. That. And, and and by not loving your neighbor, by not helping your neighbor, by not working to get along with your neighbor, what, what do we end up doing? What do we end up portraying? What example do we have when we're not loving our neighbor? And all and we all we want, and this this has been through history. That's how you used to enlist somebody. We just need an excuse. Give me an excuse. Give me something. Give me something that rationale that that because they they cross this line, because they have the audacity to be different from how we think, or 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 and especially when it doesn't make much sense when we talk about because of people based on the color of their skin. But it's just an excuse. It's not, it's not, it's just, that's all it is, is an excuse. Oh, because, because we don't like what they do. We don't like their lifestyle. That's an excuse. So I can go outside and operate in the flesh because I have an excuse. I have an excuse to do something wrong. I have an excuse to, to not follow Christ so I can go after that who is not following Christ as well. I could, I leave, I elevate myself outside of the will of God, outside the teaching of Christ, because I got a justification of righteous indignation that I can sit there and do bad things to somebody and then want the world to see me do bad things to be just like the Pharisees and Sadducees, opposed to being like Christ. Christ did not attack a sinner. He called them to repentance. He didn't call them to condemn them. Christ, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to save the world. And yet we sit there and go right back into, into the flesh. That's what some of you do. That's what some of us do. We, we sit there and think that it's okay. I got an excuse. 
in this modern day, you got people that will use whatever they can to profit their perception, their perception of the world. Oh man, it's it's just it's it's when we're gonna let our light shine. Because it's time, right? It's time to let our light shine. It's time for us to get out of the darkness of this world instead of sitting there trying to condemn one another. We get into envy. All, all the things, the works of the flesh, we get into the envy of 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 people and 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 of ministries and everything else, opposed to saying, "Look, it's time for our light to shine," because because this 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 world is not. This world is just not making it if we do it other than Christ's teaching. Look at Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Subtitled is the future glory of Israel. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. We it's time for the for the body of Christ. Stop get, get out of darkness and show the light. You don't show light by showing operating in darkness. You show light by operating in love. Cause that's what he's telling us to do. In love, huh? That's what we're supposed to do. Look at this. He said, arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Behold, look, the darkness shall cover the earth. Darkness means evil. Darkness means hate. Darkness is not, we're not literally talking about anything other than letting our light shine. Huh? That's all we're doing. We let our light shine. He said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness to people. What do you think that is? That is working of the flesh instead of working of the spirit. Huh? Working of the flesh instead of working of the spirit. Huh? Come on now. He said, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness of people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. What glory you think he's seeing? Huh? What glory you think he's seeing? What glory you think they're seeing? They're seeing the glory of God and the glory of God is not based on the works of the flesh. The glory of God is based on love. But all people doing is I just need an excuse. Just, 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 I just need an excuse to work in the flesh. I just need an excuse to operate in darkness because I'm trying to do it for love. And you're not doing it for love. You're doing it with the flesh. You're not doing it with love. That means you're doing it with hate. And the Gentiles, this is the, see, look, every last one of us, unless we are, the Hebrews, unless we are Jews, are Gentiles. Uh, let there does be no misunderstanding. You are a Gentile following Christ. If you are a follower of Christ, you are a Gentile. You are not that which is in the flesh but in the spirit, right? So Gentiles should come to that light. What light you're talking about? We're talking about the light of love. We're talking about the light of mercy. We're talking about the light of grace. He said, and he said, the Gentiles should come to that light and king. They're talking about people, statue, and, and uh, to the brightness of that rising. Lift up their eyes round about the sea. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then shall, then thou, you, shall see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the Gentiles, huh? He said, the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come to thee. That with Gentiles, that's every man and woman who are not 
born of the bloodline will come to the glory, to the light that's in us in Christ. If we let our light shine. But all we look for is excuses so we can operate in the flesh, so we can operate uh, and so we can operate in the wrongness, right? We can operate in things that does not line up with, with, with God. All we just need is just an excuse. Just an excuse, all that we need. You know? And that's where I was looking at the scripture today about teaching another gospel. How long are we going to keep teaching another gospel? How long are we going to let ourselves be deceived and think that we can change life by doing it? This subtitle right here, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. is subtitled, Paul and the False Apostles. He said, would to God, would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted with the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preaches another gospel whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit which we have not received, or another gospel which we have not accepted, you might well bear you might well bear with them. For I suppose that I was not with behind the very chiefest apostle. For though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. But we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. I was sitting there and, was, and, and, and the prevalence of even the modern day dealing with dealing with even the political landscape is the fact is that we allow the teaching of another gospel. Somebody said, What are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about the fact that it's not a solve with slave trade. Let's talk about the crusade. Let's talk about the Spanish Inquisition. Let's talk about the Jim Crow laws. Let's talk about the slave trade. Let's talk about racism, prejudice, even today. Another gospel. Another doctrine. Because I'm talking about the behavior that we have toward any other. Toward one another. See, the gospel is the gospel of love. But we sit there and think that we all we need is an excuse. And that's what life has always been. Just an excuse. Just an excuse to do to, to, to do something bad. And then we don't recognize how we're teaching young generations to follow another gospel. Because we're so stuck up on, on, on using the tools of the flesh to try to correct courses of life, to try to get people to go into to 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 be to to bear to to have let the light shine, while well, we think that we can operate outside of light to bring people to the light. That's not the teaching of Christ. That's what we want to do. Point toward. Christ. Teach people about Christ. Don't teach people about doctrine and denominations and don't teach, don't try to bring the, the if you're going to bring the teaching of Christ into the politics, then that means of love, not of justification, of hate and, 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 and cruelty. But that's what people have done. 
We we use justifications or excuses to operate outside of love for love. It it, it doesn't make does it make sense? Does it add up? No. And so you don't think that the, the, the education, I see now, I see why they want to go after the education system, because it's easy to keep people in darkness, meaning their minds blinded, so that they can do things that's going to leave people behind. Oh, man, think about it. Teaching them any other gospel and thinking that we can we we will glorify God teaching another gospel. What we what you're saying of what I'm saying is follow the gospel. Follow the gospel. Teach the gospel. The gospel is the gospel of love. It's not the gospel of hate. But some of your people go by the gospel of hate, think it is okay, but it's not okay. It's not okay. And that's why I want to close with the reading of the chapter, 1 John chapter 3. Because the fact is that it's showing you that when we teach any of the gospel, we have a issue <laughs> with death. 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 Oh. Teaching people to, to hate of death. Teaching another gospel of death. And we can't do that. Look at this right here. Verse 1, 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, and we'll, we'll finish with this chapter. And I hope that this chapter explains. Oh. But you're right. If we teach in the gospel, we teach not this just through words, but through our deeds, don't we? One second, please. Hey, back. You know, we we we're going to continue on with the uh, study uh, about First John. Uh, and, and excuse some of the uh, my breaks and and pause and because of the uh, we, you know we had a tragedy in the family, and I I even consider the teaching of another gospel, at least the word gospel or another spirit is it's, it's what we, we're facing in our society today. You know? So First John chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Behold what manner of love the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not because it knew him not. And that's what our responsibility is to show the love of God. You see, God, John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but of everlasting life. But if we show no love, but just focus on on the excuses or justification for hate, justification for wrongness, what is it that the people are seeing? What what is it that people are doing that will cause us to think that we're supposed to follow something other than the gospel? Hmm? What, 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 <laughs> you can't, he even talked about, you can't put bitter and sweet water together and sit there and think that people are learning from that. They either going to learn from your love or they're going to learn from your 
justification for hate. You step into hate and you expect to see people. I don't, I, I don't, look at this. They knew him not. Beloved, now are we now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. But here's that key word, we'll be like him. And if you don't change, you, you're going, what you what you going to do? I know they've been taught to teach you something, taught to teach you to, 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 to operate in the flesh, to to be taught to that is justifiable, but it's not. It's not justifiable. Behold, what man, verse one again, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knew, knows us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. For the sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifest to take away our sin, and in him is no sin. Whosoever abides in him sin is not. Whosoever sinneth has not seen him, neither knows him. Little children. Verse 7, little children, let no man deceive you. He that does his righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifested, the children of the devil, whosoever does not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And 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 people will call themselves something and then they'll do sin openly. Showing people what they do, and then we also got to walk on ourselves and what we do, not in front of people. But <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that people have done and killed people, and 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 don't recognize we're ministering to, we're ministering. Our actions are ministering to people. His deeds that people look at. Verse 11. This one, the subtitle is Love One Another. For this is the message that you've heard from the beginning. That we should love one another. That's the message from the beginning. And some of us sit there and think because we could go and justify doing wrong. <laughs> that we could justify our deeds get need to line up, and it and it's not it's not about it's not about judging one another. It's about trying to be example to one another. Verse eleven. But this is the message we heard from the beginning that we should love one another. Not as Cain. Look at love. There it is. Not as Cain. Who was of that wicked one that slew his brother? And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother was righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. 
We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loves not his brother abides in death. Whosoever hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abides in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God because we because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whosoever has this world goods and see his brother have need and shut us up his bowel of compassion from him. How dwells the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemneth, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemneth us not, then have we confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son of Yahusha Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandment dwells in him, and he in him. And everybody know that. He abides in us by the Spirit which has given us. I'll make sure I didn't miss this one piece here because this is very critical. Marvel not, verse 13, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abides in death. Whosoever hates his brothers of murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Mm. What's your light? Do you need a justification to show darkness? And do you think it's okay to show darkness? Do you have justification to show darkness? You don't. But we do it anyway, right? That's all we need. That's what we look for, right? Every time we do wrong, we just need some excuse. Opposed to sitting there saying, follow me as I follow Christ. Don't follow me if I don't follow Christ. Don't follow yourself. Follow Christ. Know that he loves you. Because this world, the world, the world has murder in them. That's tragedy. That even in, in 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 the day, we we there's a tragedy because we allow death. God loves you. We should love one another. We should start teaching that we love one another, so that the generation following us will know how to operate in love. But you can't teach people to love and hate. And you can't teach them that and just give you a justification because that's what they end up doing. And then they fall away because we're not teaching how to follow love. We're teaching how to follow hate, thinking that it's supposed to lead to love. But What's the scripture say? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. What's of a man so that he'll also reap? Let's think about that. Let's think about it. We can, we can, we can, we go preach the gospel. Or we can preach the world. We can preach hate. I say, let's preach love. Let's teach. Let's, let's shift our focus on teaching love. Showing what love is. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And the people who killed him are the people who lived under the law. Because they didn't follow the great commandment of love, of loving that neighbor. They, they, they teach love. No, excuse me. They teach death. They teach hate. They teach the flesh. 
They didn't teach love. Because love, oh boy, love shows compassion <laughs> on all people. Hey, same mob mentality. And that's what is happening, right? Please keep our family in prayer as we uh, suffer tragedy today, but also just keep all of us in prayer in this nation, in this world, in this country, because we think we just need a justification to hate instead of understanding there's no justification for hate when you're supposed to operate in love. Amen? All right, God bless you. I hope everybody have a great Sunday. And uh, keep our family in prayer. Let's keep one another in prayer. Let's trust the Lord. Amen. And follow Christ. Follow love for one another. Whether they're in your denomination, whether in somebody else's denomination, whether they call themselves a Christian or don't call themselves a Christian, love one another. Amen. All right. God bless you. And we'll see you when we see you. God loves you. Amen. <laughs>